Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video uh, eight of our series on rediscovering the C programming language. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about arrays and pointers. So oftentimes we're working with memory um, and um, you know we're used to doing so, you know, kind of nonchalant, um, but in the case of arrays and pointers, we need to be very careful as we do so. Um, it's real easy to make a mistake in C, and C lets you do lots of different things, and it just doesn't care. It gives you a lot of power, uh, but because of that, uh, we can find ourselves uh, making unstable programs, vulnerable programs, all sorts of different things. Um, so I would spend some time understanding arrays understanding pointers, understanding index values uh, to hopefully ensure that you can do so in a safe manner. So arrays themselves are just uh, a contiguous uh, point in memory uh, where we can store a bunch of values. Um, and so uh, we end up, you know, touching each of those individual values uh, via an index number, right? And so I've got a couple examples um, that I put in the README here, one of which being from tutorials point, um, and it basically just shows, like I said, it's a contiguous point in memory where various values are stored one after the other. And to get to each individual value, uh, we use this bracket syntax and an index value. So the first element is always index value zero. And that is because um, our array is really just a name that holds uh, a memory address. And that memory address is the address of this first point of memory. And so if we think about it, index zero is like uh, adding zero to our, um, to this uh, memory address. And so we end up at this first value. Whereas if we do a one, it's really adding the size of the individual element times one. And so that ends up moving us down into a different memory address so that we can access this element. Same with two, uh, it is the size of the individual element multiplied times two. So we end up going one, two, and we end up referencing this uh, value itself. So this article kind of breaks out um, how to uh, build an array. Um, so we have to define what is the type. So each of these elements has to have the same type, whether that be an integer, float, or you know whatever type of value that we end up storing in it. And then typically we'll give it an array size. Now it can determine this um, based on how you allocate for it. So in this case, we use this bracket syntax and we passed it one, two, three, four, five different elements. And so even if this five wasn't there, the compiler would be able to determine that, well, you gave me five uh, different items, so there must be five elements. And so that's how it's going to allocate uh, for the array. Now, this way of, of building our uh, array I, you know, we consider this uninitialized because we're not specifying any values. So the values that currently exist there in memory is what you're going to find, right? Um, and so if you're expecting, you know, something to be there, um, you could end up with some garbage values. So the better way to go about it is to either pre-allocate um, with the values that you want, or you can just do a bracket zero bracket and it will basically turn all of these elements into zeros, right? And so we'll kind of see examples of that uh, in our, uh, you know, moving forward. The second article I have, um, they, they kind of talk about some of the same things that the um, array itself points to this first element. And so when we use this zero syntax uh, or zero index, we're talking about the zeroth element one, we're talking about the, the first element or one element, second, you know, whatever. Um, the point is, is that, you know, we start with zero and count from there 
X itself or the array itself always points to this first memory address, right? And so it kind of walks down uh, different ways of kind of looking at uh, those memory addresses and stuff like that. So you see the ampersand used from time to time. So this is the address of operator. Whereas you'll see something like star X uh, is basically dereferencing X. So in this case, star X is actually, you know, this first element. So um, in the case of pointers, this is a variable that holds a memory address, not a value itself, right? So the memory address that it holds points to where the actual value is in memory. Well, an array is, is pretty much the same thing, right? Where um, the name of the array itself points to a memory address of where the array starts. And so when we dereference, we end up just hitting this first element. Um, and so as we you know, add values, they're showing you what the equivalent uh, way of, of doing it. You'll typically see you know, arrays referenced like this, um, but know that you can reference them like this. So X plus one, uh, it knows what type of data type X is. So if in the case of an integer, instead of adding one, it's actually adding four. And so it ends up jumping down to this uh, element right here once you dereference it. So you would get the value that's stored right here. All right. So let's uh, play around a little bit uh, with some examples. Again, dereference operator, address of operator. All right. So let's uh, build an array. All right. So let's call this thing just array.c. We'll do a pound include stdo.h in main. We're not going to pass anything into our main function. And we're just going to specify an array. And so here we can have an integer array. And we can uh, define the number of elements. So in my case, I could put the number of elements there. Uh, or uh, I'm just going to do a pound define and we'll call it array size and we'll say the array size is five. So this is going to be a preprocessor macro, meaning that when I type it down here during the compilation phase, it's basically just going to swap it out for me. Right. Um, so it's going to replace this array size with five. And so what actually gets compiled is five. Um, if that doesn't make any sense to you, uh, I have a video on uh, compilation uh, that you can go back in and reference. The point is, is that I'm building an integer array here. I'm not giving it any initial value, but there's a couple of things I can already do with it. So we'll go ahead and size of integers. And we'll just uh, do a carriage return size of, and we'll do integers. All right, so that should be all that we're, man, can't type. All right, let me go ahead and make that. So we'll do a make ray, so it compiles it. And we can see that the size of integers is 20 bytes. And that's because an integer on my machine is four bytes. Uh, we gave it five elements, so four times five is 20. So when it allocated space for this array, it allocated 20 bytes, which makes sense. Uh, we can even see the number of elements Probably just do percent D and we'll do a size of integers divided by size of int. So now we can see uh, the number of, so this should be 20 bytes divided by four bytes because it's of an int. And we should see after we 
make it. Oh, it's telling me this should be an LD, which is fine. I think that's what I originally had, but we'll go back, we'll make our array, we'll run it, and we do see that there are, in fact, five elements. So with an array, uh, the compiler, uh, these are preprocessor macros, so it's gonna go ahead uh, during that those compilation phases, um, it's going to go ahead and replace these with what it calculates out because it knows this array size is five. It knows um, there it's made up of integers and so it can calculate all this out for us. And I only point that out because later on uh, in our examples uh, we'll see that uh, it can't determine that anymore and so we have to build that into uh, how we write it. Okay. So let's uh, take a look as well. We can uh, see the memory address of an individual or of our array. Um, so we'll say address. We'll do percent p. And in this case, I have to count it or uh, cast it as a void star. And that's because star p is going to expect to get a void star pointer, right? And so what all we're saying is, well, integers already refers to a memory address. I'm going to tell the printf function that uh, the instead of being an int pointer, it's just going to be a void uh, pointer. Uh, and so we'll be able to print out um, that element or the address. But what happens if I print out an individual element? Let's see if it lets me do that an extra bracket and so let me well we'll just print it out that way so we'll make it all right so I mistyped let's try that again that works and I print it out now notice the address for our actual array is uh, 60, um, but the address of the uh, index one is 64. And that kind of makes sense because in our picture, we said index zero, this is where the array itself points, all right? The array itself is pointing towards that first element. So this is the memory address of the start of the array. And when I said index one, it had to move over to this spot. Well, it knows that an integer is four bytes. And so what it added was four bytes, right? And so we see 60 and we see 64, right? So that, that makes sense. So it is laid out in the way that we thought it was, okay? Now, what are the individual values in this array? So if we do a for loop, now I'll do int i equals zero. I should be less than array size i plus plus. And if this, this doesn't make sense, I have a video on uh, use of loops. Um, and so let's do print f of percent d. And this should be our integers array index i. All right, so we're gonna print out the individual items in the array. All right, and notice here, we end up with just some garbage values. And that's because we never actually initialized our array. And that might be fine, um, but if we're, you know, if we somehow reach into it at some point thinking there's gonna be a valid value there, Obviously, we didn't initialize it, and so we can't uh, make that assumption. Instead, what we can do is we can specify uh, another array, and then it'll also be array size. And this time, we can specify zero. And now, I could have specified all of the various elements in there, but by just specifying a single zero, I'm going to go ahead and yank that and paste it. I'll go ahead and change this to an F and I'll change this to 
float. And what we should see is that because we initialized floats uh, when we did it, all of the values inside of here should be zero. So make array and we run it. And in fact, it is zero, right? So we, this is uh, our array initialized. This is our array not initialized. And notice that, you know, it allocated, you know, where our array was in memory at a different point than it did before. And so we get different garbage values out. But in the case of our initialized array, we're good to go because we at least know that uh, all the values in there uh, have been cleared out. They're, they've been zeroized. All right, and so I'll leave that right there. That'll be our basic example of the use of arrays. But if we go back and look, there are cases where you may need a multi-dimensional array, right? So this what the arrays that we just used were a single dimension. And so I linked into an article from Geeks for Geeks that kind of uh, at least has a nice picture that shows you um, that this is a two-dimensional array. Uh, in columns or rows and columns and so we can access each of those uh, based on a, a row value and a column value and so what that might look like is we'll do like a multiplication table so if I close that one out I will do a, uh, a multi-dimensional array here pound include svdao.h Int main, I don't care about passing a value in, and we'll do that. I'm gonna do another pound define, and we'll call this our dimensions, and we'll we'll start it at 11, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and build our table. Uh, it's an int table, and we're gonna have two dimensions. And so dim, dim. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it to zero, even though I'm basically gonna override it. So it's a little bit of um, wasted, you know, kind of stuff, but um, for our points, it doesn't really matter. Now, again, we're gonna do a nice for loop uh, equals zero. I should be less than our dim. I plus plus okay so this is gonna be our I should essentially stand for our row so I could have called it row but anyway and I'll have J this is gonna be our column so I guess I could have just to make it easy we'll do this as row 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 your boat all right and column Column should be less than dimension and column plus plus. All right, so that's starting to look a little bit better. And our table row column equals row times column. Close out that inner loop, close out the outer loop. And now we have a table, a two dimensional table that essentially is a multiplication table. Now we could have printed it out right then, uh, but just uh, so that we can kind of see things. We have built our table. We have stored it in our multi-dimensional array. And now, uh, now we'll actually print it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do a printf. Uh, we'll do a percent. So, Essentially, our numbers should go from 0 to 10 because as soon as they get to 11 and match dim, it's going to stop looping, right? So it's going to do the inner loop for each column and then it's going to reset. It'll change to the next row and it will start back over at 0 and go all the way up till 11 where it breaks. So we don't actually store that. So anyway, 10 times 10 is 100. So we'll say we need at least three spaces uh, for our integers. And I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, just gonna do a space afterwards. And we'll call this table row 
problem. All right, close that. And then after here, since we're starting a new row, uh, we'll just print a new line so that we drop down for the next row. Turn zero. All right, so that should be good. We've built our rows columns, our two dimensional array, and then we're going to iterate across that again, just printing it out, kind of make it look nice. Again, we could have done that all in one step, um, but this is fine. A um, little less efficient, but that's all right. So we'll do a make multi, and we do in fact get our multiplication table. So we have zero times zero, one times one, two times two, three times three, so on and so forth, right? All the way up to 10 times 10. All right, so that is a multi-dimensional array where we're storing um, you know, all of these rows and columns in a single array, right? And we just do that in that manner, okay? Hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. Uh, and that was at least somewhat useful if you haven't seen multi-dimensional arrays before. Now, since we've been talking about arrays uh, and we kind of alluded to it up here when we were just kind of looking at some of those um, memory addresses, we can also start looking at uh, pointers, right? And so I jump into this because in our next video, uh, we'll talk about passing uh, by reference, um, and we'll see how um, sometimes our arrays turn into just pointers when we pass them into functions. All right, or at least we'll access them in that way. So if I uh, draw up a quick example of just the use of pointers, it'll make a little bit more sense when we talk about uh, passing by reference in our next video. So let's do vi pointers.c. Uh, we'll pound include studio.h in main, nothing's going in. And we'll do uh, integer x equals five. Uh, we'll do integer star y equals ampersand x. And so what we're doing here is we're saying we have this variable y. Variable y is an integer pointer and the address that we're gonna store in Y is the address of X, which means that both X and Y, well, X exists somewhere in memory and Y points to that point in memory, right? So if we do print F, uh, X, we'll do percent P, and we'll say I want void star and percent x. So essentially I'm taking the address of x, I'm casting it as a void star pointer so that I can print out the actual address. Print f, y percent p slash n. Also gonna cast that as a void star. But because y itself is basically just a memory address, I don't need the address of it. I'm just going to grab what is the address stored at y. All right, let's go ahead and make pointers. And when I run it, I do in fact see this is the address where x was allocated and the value or the the place where x or y points is the same memory address right because we stored the address of x in y and this means that when i make adjustments um oops when i make adjustments to um y so if i do star y equals 10 what I should see um, is that the value of x has changed. All right, so I dereferenced 
into y. So the thing that y points to, now I'm referencing that value and adjusting it. And so if I make pointers and I run pointers, I do in fact see that now x holds the value of 10, right? So I hope that makes a little bit of sense that under the hood, we're, we're just talking about memory addresses, much in the same way that when we were working with arrays, we were just you know indexing on uh, address values, All right? Um, if I look at my notes, I mean, those are primarily uh, the things that um, you know, I wanted to cover, but just like in arrays, we can also have pointers that if not initialized, they're going to exist somewhere in memory, right? Oops. But the values that they point to might not be what we want. And that's because we didn't initialize them. So we have to be careful and notice that uh, some of my warning flags that I've set indicate to me, hey, you used variable Z. It's in an uninitialized state. Are you sure this is what you want to do, right? And this again is why we need to make sure we're using, you know, warning flags. My warning flags are set in my make file. I talked about this in a previous video, but these warning flags kind of help me key into the fact that, hey, you might want to look uh, at something in your program because this doesn't quite make sense. And so when I run it, I'll see that Z currently says it's one, right? And that just happens to be that, you know, hey, you know, something in, um, you know, in wherever Z is, there's something in memory there and it's interpreting that as one, right? Um, so just be careful that just like with our arrays, you can have, um, you can have pointers that point to garbage as well, right? So most of the time you would, when you allocate it, you either point it towards something or maybe you point it towards Null. So you know that whatever it points at is essentially nothing. Uh, in our case, this is going to explode because I'm trying to dereference into a pointer that's set to null. And so if I make this and I run it, I'm going to get a segmentation fault. And that is because I tried to dereference into something that doesn't actually point anywhere, right? And so when we use pointers, we'll find out um, that we need to check before we dereference into them whether they point to a null value. Because if they do, again, it's you know trying to uh, go to a null point in memory, you know, results in an error or a segmentation fault. So in this case, I'm going to take this. Uh, back off just so that you can see that hey if we don't initialize you know a value here so this is uninitialized if I can spell that which will throw a warning and could point to you know whatever right so again we want to set an initial value um, and we want to make sure um, that if uh, there's a chance that dereferencing into it could be, you know, a null value, we need to check to see if it's null before we do it, or we're going to result in a segmentation fault. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But again, arrays and pointers are very close. They're all using memory addresses. Um, but the use of the array uh, allows us to use things like the size of and, and things like that. But as we'll find in a later video, when we pass it into a function, uh, we still have to be careful um, because the size of no longer works. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit.
So again, arrays, are, we use those quite a bit. Pointers you'll see used all over the place. If you need to use multi-dimensional arrays, you can do that in C. Uh, you'll see uh, the dereference operator and you'll see the address operator used quite a bit in the use of arrays and pointers. Um, and so you might as well get used to using them. But you need to be careful um, to make sure that you're referencing things that actually, um, you know, either go somewhere or you've initialized, you know, the values that are there once you get there. So in the case of our array, we initialize that, that floating array with zeros rather than, you know, just have a bunch of garbage there. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the video up there. Uh, that way it doesn't go too long. I hope again this was informative to you and I uh, thank you for watching. Bye.